Nicholas's diagnosis goes back to 2005. It seemed like he just caught a cold. As time progressed, things got worse and then just started getting more and weaker, uh, wasn't walking um, to the point where one night he spent the whole night just crying in agony, holding the back of his head. Within, I'd say half an hour to an hour of being at Sick Kids with the blood test, uh, they came to my parents and said, your son has leukemia, uh, AML, the adult version. Um, his counts are through the roof. If a normal human being should have eight to 12 white blood cell count, his were 350 and 375 would have been death. They immediately uh, started putting through a dialysis machine to withdraw as many white blood cells as possible um, and said there's a good chance he's not going to make it through the night. While in the hospital, um, he would have to go through a bone marrow transplant. We were fortunate that he had a 100% match with our second youngest, the second youngest boy in the family, Christopher. He went through five intense chemo sessions. The last session was just before the bone marrow transplant, which was supposed to wipe clean all cancer. Unfortunately, it wiped clean most of the cancer and so much of his good cells that I guess his body couldn't fight what was left and the cancer came back just before his treatment. Now because of this, the doctors were very skeptical. They said it's less than a 1% chance of survival. We shouldn't even do this transplant. We said, no, we're going forward with this uh, and there's no ifs, ands, or buts. After a couple of weeks, his numbers were up to the point where he was able to leave the hospital and go home, which was the greatest early Christmas gift we could get. My work is developing new drugs to target proteins that are involved in the progression of human cancers. And our goal is to make molecules that bind to these proteins potently and selectively um, so that we can switch them off in blood cancers. And we want to do this so that a minimal amount of drug is used and therefore is less toxic to the patient. It was very inspirational to uh, meet a researcher like Dr. Gunning who is so close to coming up with new ways of treating different blood cancers. For example, he's doing a lot of research with AML, with, uh, which is what Nicholas had. So because he's so close, it's so good to see just the, the drive in him and the, just his passion to come up with pro uh, new treatments so that uh, more kids don't have side effects like Nicholas does. I think it's really impactful to, to see what a potentially less toxic therapeutic, um, the impact that would have on someone like Nicholas. I think it's extremely profound. It's, it's very motivational and really spurns me and my research team to, to really get molecules that are less aggressive um, and can help people like Nicholas. So the proteins we target in blood cancers are also involved in other human cancers and diseases such as brain cancer and psoriasis. It really is, um, it's a target that is involved in many human diseases. So the application of these drugs will be widespread. The challenge with blood cancer is that there's no tracking system, no prevention, no screening, no detection. You can take a simple blood test, which can appear to be very routine, and receive a full-blown diagnosis. That's why the focus in blood cancer is all about less harmful therapies. In the next 20 years, we expect we'll learn more about blood cancer than we have in the previous 100. So this really prompts us to accelerate the work that we do in trying to improve the lives of Canadians with blood cancer and accelerate the work that we're doing to fund blood cancer research. My first research grant was from the LLSC um, and they've really supported and promoted my research throughout the last five to six years. 
um, to get us to a stage where we're at advanced preclinical trials and without their support this would not have been possible. Please continue to donate to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society for our important work. Someday is today.